this downswing's done in 0.25 oh, of a second. Yeah. You, got, you got no chance. No chance. Absolutely no, no chance. chance. So we need to be slow and very cognizant of the movement so it can actually change. Welcome back to the channel guys, Kerry Gray on the range today here at the Ells Club in Dubai, standing next to Jamie Howarth. He is a tour pro, he's played on the Challenge Tour, he's played in a British Open. We're gonna be talking all about how to work through a swing change when you're on the range, we're not raking and pulling, we're thinking about this movement in a methodical manner, and he is gonna show you how. Let's get in. Butter, butt hook. All right, Jay, so what have you been working on in your game of recent times? Um, so my biggest kind of pet peeve, if you like, don't like to see the ball going left, um, especially if I aim left and try and cut it and double cross it, it's a killer. Um, obviously, for any good player, yeah. if you get it going the wrong direction, it's a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So in, ter in terms of what I've been sort of working on, obviously, to hit that shot, the club path's got to be a little bit left of that face. Okay. Um, but like in the past, and I think a, quite a common theme with a lot of golfers when they try and hit that, they, they kind of pull the handle, face always stays open, and they might might cut it, but it'll be a right going right. Yeah. Okay. So like in terms of like sort of my motion and what I kind of like to feel um, on the way down, make sure I get this left shoulder, left arm, kind of working tying back in towards me a little bit. Okay. Helps get the club head back on the arc in front of me. And then I can be more passive with that club shaft. It feels like it's staying a little bit more stable through the shot. So when you're not hitting it too well, yep. and you say you want to try and avoid the left one, right? Yeah. And is it starting left and drawing too much, or what's the ball for? Yeah, absolutely. So when I hit that bad shot, it's, it starts maybe actually probably where I want it to go, but then obviously it goes the wrong wrong way. Goes, okay, so, so it's a little bit like, um, I know I'm working it, wanting to work the club left, but it gets a little bit out here, and then I kind of probably shut the face down a little, and it it goes the wrong direction. Okay, okay. So, so if you were going to work on that uh, by yourself, what yep. would the process of uh, pre-rehearsal swings before you hit the shot? Yeah, absolutely. Are you doing them fast? Are you doing them slow? Are you doing them with intent to hit the ground? What does that look like? Um, so so when my process in terms of my feel, I'm basically trying to develop a feeling for what I'm going to try and feel through the shot. And like you said, doing it slow, doing it deliberate, Yeah. Um, heightens those feels for me. Yeah. Um, I got a better sensation of where my arms are, where the club is, and then obviously try and somewhat replicate that feeling then when we go to hit one, um, mm. pull out. So. So, so so, that's what we see with a lot of players, right? And um, you're a very high level player yourself, you played in the major championship and you do a bit of coaching. And we often see that recreational golfers, when they do work on their game, they just do it way too fast, don't they? Yeah. Right? And Absolutely. you relate this to any other sport. Let's say you're trying to work on your ball handling skills in soccer. Yeah. Now, if you lay some cones out, you've never done this before, and you try and rush through, you're just going to knock all over the cones, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. So whenever you're changing a movement pattern, and it's great, so these guys can see as well, is it's all about doing it slow and deliberate. Yes. Because as soon as you try and speed that pattern up, this downswing is done in 0.25 oh. of a second. Yeah. You've got, you got no chance. No chance. Absolutely no, no chance. chance. So we need to be slow and very cognizant of the movement so it can actually change. Because Absolutely. too often, players get frustrated, they work on a couple of swings, they might hit one shot, and they go, okay, I've got it. Let's move on to the next yep. one. So, how many years have you been playing for now? Wow, showing my age now. <laughs> um, I've been playing golf, like, it's gotta be, it's over 20 years now. Yeah. So. And just for reference sake, how long have you been working on this particular motion in some capacity? Um, for at least 12 months. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's the same thing. Mm. Like I'm not like changing, moving the goalposts every week and going, I'll try this, I'll try that. You know, next tip, oh, what have we got? You know, I think the more and more you do it, you you take ownership of it, and that movement, that feel, starts to develop and and obviously own it. That's that's the biggest thing, right? Because there is such a difference between demonstration and ownership. Yeah. And what we see with a lot of players is they might be able to do it once on the range. They might be able to get that feeling. They might be able to get the handle kind of working left to mitigate the chance that it's going to get that sort of pull draw that yep. you're looking for. But then they're too easy or too quick to then pop onto the next thing and the next thing and the next thing yep. without ever ingraining that initial motion. I think it's done. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and a bit of research is shown, paraphrasing here, but anywhere between five, three and 5,000 repetitions. And when you're doing that many, that is slow, yeah, deliberate, yeah. with intent. 
It's not like, let's try and get three to 5,000 done and off we go. Dragon, dragon hit, dragon yeah. hit, dragon hit. We need to, we need to have <laughs> yeah. some intent, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, Let's say that you get stuck in a groove and you feel like you're actually executing these shots exactly how you'd like each and every time. Yep. From a performance standpoint, because you don't do this when you're playing golf, you hit a shot every five to 10 minutes. Yeah. How do you then break it up to make it a little bit more relatable to what you would do out on course? So start varying targets. Um, and then obviously if, if the ball fight's fully under control, you start to hit some shots lower, higher. Mm -hmm. um, I might say working through the bag as well. Like you said, you're not hitting the same club over and over and over again. Um, but I think, like you say, if you're working on some some technique and some movement pattern stuff, obviously you need to do it a bit more block so you you can start to feel it and develop a change. Yeah. Um, but like you say, once you've got that and you and you feel like you've got it comfortable, you need to then take it to a course. So it's, you need to kind of replicate what you do on a golf course. You know, going through routine, picking targets, deciding what shape of shot you're going to hit. And that's, that's such an important lesson. Like I'm sure you've played so many pro-ams and they'll ask you for a little bit of advice at the wrong time on the golf course while they're playing. <laughs> yeah. And if it doesn't work straight away, they switch off. And it's great to see even a high level professional here uh, working on your game, it's, it's slow, it's considered. Yeah. You're thinking uh, very methodically about the process in which you follow, so therefore you get a chance to ingrain it. And yeah. we all know that you might be able to nail it here, but when you stand up on that first tee, Gotta every skill is perishable. Yeah, and consequence. If yeah. you get it to 100% and you fill that bucket up and you go, wow, I've nailed it, you might only get 10% of that when you're playing. But that 10% could be the difference between yeah. one shot, that's the cut, one shot, that's a victory, and then putting it closer to the pin to give yourself a better opportunity of, of then making yeah, a number. Sure. Yeah, sure, sure. Absolutely. So let's watch you do a couple of slow rehearsals yeah. and then go ahead okay. and execute for me. So, so I, I even sometimes do, obviously when I'm playing on the golf course, I'll even go through a little routine where I'll kind of, you know, get over the ball, obviously get, get my uh, my target in my eye, but then I'll, I'll kind of work it back and then I might just do a little pump down, just get a feeling of where that left arm needs to be, where the club shaft needs to be. Wonderful. You know, back again and then let's, uh, let's try and hit one. Good. Yeah, actually worked a little left to right as well. Yeah, that's amazing. And I'd say that's a, that's a perfect execution. Thank you.